Hello everyone, this is Fine from Awesome Tea Gaming Pro. I hope you all are well. Today I'm going to talk about the two TV. LG G3 is one of the LG's most elite OLEDs, sitting only below the LG M3 and its wide wireless tape and the 8K Z3 series. OLED technology continues to evolve, and the LG G3 features what LG refers to as Brightness Booster Max, a light boosting technology that LG claims makes the G3 70% brighter than previous generation OLEDs. The key bit of technology in LG G3 to achieve this is microlens array, MLA technology, which is a layer of microscopic lenses that sit in a layer above the OLED panel and can enable much more of the light from the panel to reach your eyes, absent from the more affordable LG C3. This MLA tech makes the G3 stand out in LG's lineup. The LG G3 supports Dolby Vision HDR and HLG HDR formats, but as with all the LG TVs, it doesn't support HDR 10 plus. In terms of gaming features, the LG G3 covers a lot of bases with Dolby Vision gaming support, 4 HDMI 2.1 ports rated for 420 Hz with VRR including AMD FreeSync and NVIDIA G-Sync, LLM and GAG compatibility. Coupled with the Alpha 9 Gen 6 processor, the G3 is packing some serious performance for gaming and picture processing. The first two channel speaker system with Dolby Atmos and DTS compatibility aims to improve on the audio performance of other OLEDs in order to attain a sound that can complement the picture on screen. The overall Smart TV software web operating system 23 has access to all the major apps including Netflix, Disney Plus, Prime Video and Apple TV Plus to name a few. If you say the LG G3 picture quality, in Filmmaker HDR mode, uh, I measured uh, peak brightness at an impressive 1449 nits on a 10% window, which actually tops the Samsung S95's 1400 nits, making this marginally the brightest OLED. It did a uh, respectable 219 nits on a full 100% window, but that's notably lower than the 265 nits on the S95C. The QM90 is much, much brighter than this. The LG suggested that the G3 will have a 70% brightness increase on previous generation of its OLED TVs. And with these numbers, I can confirm it, last year's LG G2 measured in the bright vivid mode uh, hit 1000 nits in a 10% window and the LG C3. In the same filmmaker mode as the G3, it just over half the G3's result with uh, 830 nits. The G3's MLA panel has certainly boosted the peak brightness by a substantial amount. On 65-inch LG G3, it's worth nothing that 83-inch G3 doesn't include MLA, so it's likely to perform closer to the LG G2's result for brightness. Although, we have yet to confirm this for ourselves. In filmmaker HDR mode again, the LG yielded some great results with its color accuracy, delivering an average delta E value of just under 3. This demonstrates the difference between a color test pattern and what's shown on the screen. And I'm happy that anything under 3 accurate enough for TV being PCAP3 coverage, the color space used for mastering 4K Blu-rays and digital cinema releases. PCAP3 coverage was 98% and VT 2020 was 73.8%, both of which are very good results. Grayscale Delta E values, testing black levels and contrast accuracy average around 1.9, which is another excellent result. One thing I noticed straight away was how well the G3 with its MLA panel and anti glare screen made easy work of the testing rooms bright overhead lights and spotlights when pushed them high to see how it fared. Only the reflection of some awkwardly placed overhead lights was visible. So the LG G3 should be fine with generally bright indoor lights. The Samsung S95's higher full screen brightness will be a little better for really bright sunlit rooms. But neither holds a candle to mini LED TVs such as the Samsung Q90C. Nevertheless, with only minor reflections, it's still extremely impressive how well the LG G3 handled the brightness testing facility. The out of the box picture is certainly impressive on the LG G3. I cycled through several of the picture presets to test the LG G3 for color, sharpness, contrast, and also brightness, seeing just what the MLA panel could do. Using a couple of scenes from the Batman to test these presets, 
starting with uh, one scene where Batman writes a uh, bright there to guide people in the dark and flooded room, standard mode had a, a decent enough picture with the bright color, but black levels weren't as deep and brightness was pushed a little too far. However, switching to cinema mode, the contrast was more balanced, enabling the G3 to show how it can act accentuate shadows, giving a rich detail to the overall picture. The G3's filmmaker mode added further to this, giving the flare is uh, subtle yet vibrant feel that made it stand out without glowing out. In another scene where Batman first appears in a subway fight, black levels were outstanding as the shadows and Batman's suit looked truly dark without losing any detail. Testing Dolivision HD content again in filmmaker mode, the light savers colors were punchy and dynamic without being too glaring. Red was a very prominent color in the scene as girls, and a chunk of the background were all red. But the LG G3 handled the vibrancy well, keeping a naturally yet flashy look with all the red in the scene. On Google to test more HDR content, a range of demo material highlighted the phenomenal picture quality of LG G3 even further. Several snowy scenes showcased how the LG G3 can handle vivid whites without overdoing them and keeping a natural feel. During some landscape night shots of a city, contrast levels were excellent with the black of the night sky contrasting well with the bright lights of the buildings. As for motion, the LG G3 handled fast paced action scenes with ease. Again, in the uh, Batman during the uh, Batmobile chase, the darting cars looked fluid with the uh, G3 taking light work of this testing scene. Also, during both the training and final missions of Top Gun Marvic, the LG G3's processor effortlessly handled the swooping fighter jets as they carried through the air at a grinding pace, still managing to keep the detail and uh, quality of the picture. If you find yourself drawn to a brighter picture mode such as standard but not vivid, which should be avoided at all costs, motion processing called true motion does create the uh, dreaded soap opera effect, but thankfully the G3 picture settings give you ample setting to tweak to avoid this. However, if you want the best picture, my advice is to stick with Filmmaker mode as it makes the G3 shine, putting it up there with the best quality TVs. On the other hand, if you see the Samsung Q90C, which quickly establishes itself it as an excellent TV, which, while not quite as cutting edge as it's much more expensive than Q95C sibling, getting uh, closer than the price difference, give it to consider against one of the many excellent quality TVs now available for around the same sort of price point. Two key points in particular stand out how bright its pictures can get, but also how dark its picture can get. On the brightest side, on q 90 see bright edges since blaze of the screen with a degree of radiance and accompanying color volume that manages to deliver on the edge old luminance argument in favor of high end density TVs. I should say right away that the new generation of OLEDs, both QD OLEDs from the Samsung itself and MLA OLEDs from LG, Panasonic, and Sony Philips, get much uh, closer to the brightness the Q90C produces with full screen brightness content that any previous OLED technologies would have. But the advantage remains nonetheless helping to sell the full extent HDR's capabilities and becoming especially worth considering we are looking for a TV for a bright room. The Q90C does have a couple of consistency issues where its brightness is concerned. When it comes to Q90C's handling of dark scenes, the screen really is capable of delivering black colors that are pretty much as deep and uh, full of low contrast grayness as uh, those you get the with OLED TVs. Even in shorts that uh, contain a broad mix of very dark and quite uh, bright elements, Black levels still look remarkably deep and cinematic, despite the Samsung screen using any backlighting rather than self-emissive pixels. 
For the most part, the Kubernetes is handling off its life, particularly when it comes to balancing the control of its huge number of deeming zones is outstanding, a crucial cut above the performance in this respect of recent eye-catching buzzer challenges from Hyzen and TCL. In particular, backlighting deeming, where extraneous light can appear around standard bright objects is extremely well suppressed for an LED TV capable of so much brightness and such good black levels. I should immediately add that some of the things the QNNTC has to do to achieve its outstanding black levels can impact time is its consistency, something we'll be getting into later. But most of the time, its combination of brightness and contrast is quite sensational by LCD TV standards. You would hope for a quantum dot screen capable of uh, brightness and black levels as impressive as those of QNNTC. It also stands out with its color performance. These bright tones share space with uh, impressive levels of subtly and uh, blending that uh, pretty much fully dispenses with the sort of color stripping issues Samsung HD TVs could suffer with a few years ago. Combining such a range of colors and volumes with such strong color tone subtly contributes to a picture that looks natural and three-dimensional rather than cartoonish and flat. So long anyway as you avoid the over eager dynamic picture preset. The QNATC deliver 4K images packed with sharpness, texture, and density, yet without leaving them looking processed or prone to picture noise. Especially actually if you turn off the noise reduction feature found in uh, this TV's picture clarity menu section, thanks to the extensive machine learning that's gone into the latest neural quantum processor 4K picture engine. Meanwhile, the QNNTC also upscales HD and even HD images uh, to screens 4K resolution superbly, adding a genuine sense of resolution and uh, without exaggerating any sources, noise, or compression artifacts. In fact, upscalers have ability to spot the difference between noise and real picture information as part of its upscaling process is one of its greatest strengths. The motion processing is a bit of a mess in its uh, default settings with uh, most presets, causing too many unwanted processing side effects and leaving motion looking unnaturally fluid. Choosing a custom setting uh, for TV's picture clarity features and setting the blur and jutter components to around the three or four level years much greener or more cinematic results. Excellent through the Samsung QNNTC's pictures are for such a relatively affordable Samsung Mini LED TV. There are a few other niggles to be aware of, starting with the fact that while the QNNTC generally does an excellent job of suppressing light blooming around standout bright objects, light bleeding does become much more noticeable if you have to watch the TV from an angle. The vertical wing angle at which blooming becomes noticeable is uh, really quite limited. Something to bear in mind you are thinking of while mounting your TV above your uh, seated head height. As usual too, Samsung tends to dim down on the QNNTC the intensity of very stark, standout uh, output bright objects when they appear within an otherwise uh, very dark image frame. So small HDR highlights such as the green Pennywise's eyes as he talks uh, to Georgie from a rainwater drain near the start of it, uh, chapter 1 on 4K Blu-ray looks significantly subdued compared with uh, how the look on self emissive OLED displays. Though you didn't forget, uh, I have mentioned before that the QNNTC can look brighter than OLED TVs with full screen bright HDR images. Suppose you are watching a screen that features sharp cuts between very dark and very bright shots uh, using TVs dynamic and default standard pieces. Meanwhile, you can also uh, sometimes see the picture suddenly adjusted baseline brightness after a momentary delay to try and make the bright shot look brighter and black levels more effective in the dark shots. Fortunately, this issue disappears in the movie preset and since this preset also delivers a natural balanced picture without significantly graying 
screens eye catching black levels or robbing the picture of too much color punches uh, a great option to have on hand if the typically most engaging standard preset causes too many brightness jumping artifacts during a particular film so in this 2 tv lg g3 is definitely a better tv overall but q90c is very bright tv so what's your thought which tv you like most please write in the comments below that's it from now if you like this video please subscribe and press the bell icon for future notifications update i have another channel named tech gaming villa whether i upload similar kind of tech videos please visit this channel and subscribe for update have a good day thanks for watching to change your